I'm not proud of how I reacted or responded when I first found out that I was going to be a special needs mom. So when people ask, I'm always reluctant to share for that reason. I became a special needs mom before an autism mom, so I feel like my story is a lot different anyway. But I do feel like understanding and knowing might be able to help some parents out there that are also going through this process. To start off with, I love Noah. Noah's perfect as is. I'm not wanting to change him. So I am sharing how I felt a long time ago, like 11, 12 years ago. No one handed me a manual. No one told me how I was supposed to react, what I was supposed to do. I didn't know what ableism was. I reacted with human emotions. It doesn't make it okay. I'm not making excuses, but it is our story. So it was a few months before Noah's fourth birthday, a couple months before I had dropped out of college and spent the rest of what was going to be my semester, um, kind of just trying to find help for Noah and trying to help him, trying to get people to listen to me. If you haven't watched his story, I'll link it below. But it was a really long journey. And I had decided to go down to the local school and drop off a piece of paper like, hey, I need my son evaluated. And I also let them know that I knew by law they had 30 days. And because I had already went to like the district of the school district we lived in, they already knew I was going. Like I even made the front office like sign something say, stating that she received it. And within a week they had called me for an evaluation. So it worked, it was great. So when his evaluation came, they tested his hearing, his vision, bunch of things I didn't understand at the time. They asked me a million questions. I voiced my concerns. Finally, she did go over the test results with me. I was absolutely shocked. I was not expecting it. You know, in that moment, what I felt was failure. I felt like I had failed Noah as a mom because at this point he is my third. I have two older kids who don't have these struggles. Like clearly I had to do something wrong. I could have done something different, right? I could have played with them more. I could have worked less. There was just so many thoughts that was going through my head that it kind of caught me off guard when she next said, I'm not a doctor, I can't diagnose him, but with test scores this low, your son is going to have a lifelong disability. I do not feel like it was her place to say that. I feel like those are things that should be definitely be left to the doctor. She was literally just like a school coordinator. It was like the preliminary results. Like we hadn't even had the IEP meeting yet. I am thankful that she said something, but at the same time, I'm like, was that her place? Because I feel like an actual psychologist might have put it in a much better terms because there's no way for you to know from test results if a child is going to have a lifelong disability. And I didn't know what that meant. I was frozen. I was numb. I was like, what kind of disability? Like, what do you mean? And she just kind of went back to her not being a doctor saying, well, if I had to guess, it'd probably be autism or some type of intellectual disability. And I knew nothing of either. Like, I literally knew very little about disabilities and even less about autism. I walked out of there in a daze. I buckled Noah in his car seat and I was just so upset and I like kept telling Noah that I was sorry because I just felt like again like I had felt him and I had been able to do something different. I honestly thought we were going into this evaluation and answers were going to be met with a solution of some sort. So I went home that day. I told my sister, my mom, and Lonnie uh, my mom really didn't know what to say. I don't think anyone really did when we told them. They were just kind of like, wow, kind of thing. My sister had made remarks about Noah being autistic before, so she actually said she wasn't surprised. I think Lonnie's reaction was kind of similar to mine. He just seemed kind of like numb and frozen. So for the rest of the day, I basically Googled until I couldn't Google anymore. You know you've Googled too much when the same thing keeps coming up, like you're not getting any different information. And I feel like disabilities is such a broad term. I didn't realize that at the time. So I didn't even realize that I, would, I didn't even know what I was looking for, honestly. So after spending all day Googling, I spent the rest of my night, all night, trying to watch shows and movies about autism. And there was not a lot back then. It wasn't like there was a YouTube channel I could watch. It was basically just trying to understand these very stereotypical movies and shows 
I just wanted someone to tell me what my son was going to be like. I wanted to know exactly who Noah was going to be 5, 10, 15 years from now. I was trying to prepare myself. I was trying my very best just to understand. So my sister asked if I wanted to go to the store with her. She looked on the TV, saw what I was watching. I was like, no, I'm just going to stay home. Don't feel like going out. And she's like, Stephanie, you can't do this to yourself. You're just torturing yourself. You don't know what Noah's going to be like 10 years from now. I knew she was right. Like it was good advice, but at the same time, I felt like I couldn't pull myself away either. I felt like I needed some glimmer of hope, someone to tell me what to expect in the future. For the day, I'd really never thought about my kids' future. I just always assumed they'd grow up healthy, they'd finish school, get married if they wanted, have a career, move out, do their thing. Like I never really thought about what their future would look like because I was never that parent that felt like they needed to follow a certain path. I wanted them to follow their path that made them happy. But when something like this happens, I think sometimes we react different than we think we're going to. Because I was literally just on my bed sobbing and like these flashes of what I thought Noah's future was gonna look like just kept going through my head. And it was almost feeling like grief was just swallowing me whole. And it's kind of silly to say all of this out loud now, but then that is definitely how I felt. Lonnie came to bed that night and held me and I cried harder and I was dramatic. I remember asking him, why him, why Noah? I honestly felt like a disability had happened to my child and not that he was born with it. I went to sleep that night and woke up a different person, a different mother. Being a parent to disability changes you. It changes you in a fundamental way. I've talked about this, but I mean, it changes you not just as a mom, but as a person, as a friend, as a sister, as a wife. And it's almost like I was battling up for the war that was to come. Like it was almost like I was having to prepare myself. I realized that this was something they were born with. It didn't suddenly happen. It was confusing. I wanted to understand it. I was a young mom, fresh 25 with three kids and, and trying to understand how these things happen as I'm sure most parents do. But overall, I decided to choose positivity after that. Processing a child's diagnosis, it takes time and grace. And it's okay if it takes you a little bit of time. Now, if you know our story, you know our path wasn't straight to autism took some zigzag turns. It would be another year and a half before we received a diagnosis of autism. And I felt like that made it harder. Everyone was telling me, your child has a disability, but no one could tell me what the disability was. So I didn't even know what I was grieving. I didn't even know what I was processing. I couldn't even get the information that I needed. I feel like had the school assessed them for autism and been like, look, your kid's autistic. I could have processed that and I could have dealt with that, but having to process a million things and you have no idea what you're really even processing made it 10 times harder. So if you ask me how it was to become a special needs mom the first time, how I felt when Noah got diagnosed, I'm gonna tell you that it was hard and I'm gonna say that I cried. I don't like who that Stephanie was. She was ignorant and selfish and ableist and a bit dramatic and, Yes, being a special needs mom has changed me, but I feel like it's changed me for the better. Don't mind those blinds, guys. <laughs> we are getting new ones, but I hope this story helps others out there, helps even just one person out there know that you're not alone. Yes, those feelings I felt, in my opinion, were a little bit ridiculous. How I acted was a little bit ridiculous, but it was my raw emotions and it was how I was feeling. I feel like it's ridiculous now, but at the time I was just having every emotion, my world turned upside down and it took me a lot to process it. So know that you're processing it, you're grieving a child's future that you thought they were gonna have. But it's also important to understand that they don't know that. Like, they don't have like a different future in their head and they're like, oh, now I'm gonna have a different one. They're gonna grow up and just be them and who they are by themselves is perfect. But in the meantime, it doesn't mean you aren't gonna have emotions, you definitely are. So understand that it is hard. If you would like for me to do more like stories like this, I don't mind. Um, this was kind of something that I was gonna turn into a blog. I might still, but... I have others that I feel could be useful for other people. Little stories that really don't fit into anything but its own story kind of thing. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And I hope everyone has themselves a great week. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there.
later There's no doubt in my mind You will always be the Heading out to see ya And leave the rest behind Oh